Hi guys, this is Miss Dixon. So today is Friday, March 20th, and we're gonna jump into the next two pages in our math packet. So in order for you to be ready for this video, you need to have your math packet with you. It should be opened to the day that says Friday, March 20th, and you should have a pencil. Awesome. So the very first problem on our packet today is a tricky problem. So I want to give you a second to read the problem about Branson and his sister Beatrice. So as you're reading this problem, one of the words that's really important for you to figure out what it means is that word combined. That very first sentence says that Branson and his sister Beatrice combined their allowance for $8 each so they could buy a movie for $12. So that word combined makes me think of adding. And if they're combining their allowance, that means I have to add. What do you think I have to add? Write down the number sentence. Hopefully, the number sentence that you wrote down was 8 plus 8 equals something. The reason why is because in that first sentence, it says that Branson and Beatrice combined their allowance of $8 each. That means that Branson's allowance is $8 and Beatrice's allowance is $8. So we have to add that together to figure out how much money they have all together. So 8 plus 8, that's a quick doubles fact. Take a second, write down the answer. Hopefully you got the answer of 16. And I'm gonna put a dollar sign in front of that because that represents their total amount of money that they have together. So they decided to use that money, it tells us, to buy a movie for $12. And the next part of this question is saying that they bought $1 containers of fruit salad with the remaining money and split the containers evenly together. So I know for this problem, and it's a little bit tricky, I have to do a couple of different things in order to actually answer the question, how many containers of fruit salad did they each get? Right now, I'm thinking in my head, if they had $16 together, but they spent 12 of it on a movie, how much do they have left? And I can figure that out with a number sentence of 16 minus 12 equals something. That means they had $16 to spend to, um, together with their allowance, and they the movie cost $12. So how much money do they have left? Write that down on your paper. Hopefully you wrote down four, because 16 minus 12 equals four. And that, again, I'm gonna put a dollar sign there because we're talking about dollars. So, so far I know that they had four dollars left, and the problem's telling me that they bought $1 containers of fruit salad with their remaining money. So how many containers could they get if they had $4? Hopefully, you realize that they could get four containers because each container was worth $1 but we're not even done yet. This problem has many steps to it, and now we have to figure out how many containers that they each have. So we have two people, and we have four containers. What do you think I need to do to solve this problem? Hopefully you're saying, well, you have to split or divide four into half half for Beatrice and half for Branson. So, thinking in my head, what's half of four? Hopefully you know half of four is two. So two containers each. Circling my answer. 
Awesome. This next part of our page takes up the rest of our page and it says for us to complete the chart about the 2D shapes, oh, typo, that should say shapes below. So you have one, two, three, four, five, six different shapes. Your job is to write down the number of sides, the number of vertices, and the name of the shape. I am going to do this on my own as we give you about three or four minutes to figure it out yourself. Take each shape at a time and go ahead and get started. I'm going to say like another minute and a half to finish the sheet. About 30 more seconds. Okay. So, hopefully you are finished. If you're not, um, you can just keep working as we go over the answers. So as I said, I was doing the work by myself over here. I'm going to zoom in a little bit more so you can see the chart a little bit better. Um, okay, so this first shape, hopefully everyone figured out is a circle. And because um, and circles have no sides and no vertices, the next shape was a little bit tricky. Hopefully you use some strategies that you learned in kindergarten and first grade to make sure that you are counting the sides. You can always count the sides just like this by drawing a line through them to see that there are eight sides and eight vertices. Shapes will have the same number of sides and vertices. And remember, vertices is just a fancy word for corners. So here we have uh, a, a shape that has eight sides and eight vertices, and it's called an octagon. Now, some of you probably got this, and some of you might not have been sure of the name, or you might have wrote hexagon or pentagon. Remember, octagon um, is just like an octopus. Octo octopus octopies have eight legs, and octagon is a shape with eight sides. All right, the next one, we have a triangle, because it has three sides and three vertices. Um, the next shape is called a hexagon because it has six sides and six vertices. The next shape, it has four sides and four vertices, and that's called a rectangle. And then we have the last shape has five sides and five vertices, and that's a pentagon. One thing that's really important, the reason why we're taking the time now to actually talk about these 2D shapes is because later on this year, we are going to be learning about 3D shapes. And in order for you to understand 3D shapes, you have to make sure you know the names and the number of sides of these 2D shapes. 
Now I'm going to draw a shape here on the board, and it's not in your packet, so this is extra. And I want you to tell me what the name of this shape is. It's not perfect, but what is the name of this shape? And let me zoom out so you can see it. I'm counting the sides. One, two, three, four. So it has four sides. It has four vertices. Some of you might call it a rectangle, which is true. This is a rectangle, but it also has another name. And that another, another name is a square. Think in your head. Why is this shape a square? Hopefully you know that it's a square because not only does it have four sides and four vertices, but all of the sides are equal. So that's important for us to know. Great. Let's turn to the next page in our packet. Okay. This next page in our packet is starting with some more half problems. So you have to figure out what half of 62, 68, 66, 64, and 70. Now, again, in one of the earlier videos we had, I talked about how it's really important that you do the ones that are easiest for you first. And the ones that are easiest for halves should be the ones that have an even digit in the tens place and an even digit in the ones place. So I see a couple of those here. Why don't you get started? I'll give us about a minute to write down what half of these numbers are. What, 15 more seconds. Okay, let's go over these problems. So, half of 62, hopefully you got the answer of 31 because half of six is three, half of two is one. So that's how you get 31. Next one, 68. Half of 68 is 34. Half of six is three, half of eight is four, 34. Next one, half of 66, well, that's 33. Half of six is three, half of six is three. Making sure you're taking half of the tens and then half of the ones. Uh, half of 64, that's 32. Half of six is three, half of four is two. And the last one, half of 70. This is a little bit trickier because that seven in the tens place is odd, but half of 70 is 35. 30 plus 30 equals 60, and five plus five equals 10. 60 plus 10 equals 70. Awesome. This next problem that we have on our page has to do with temperature. We know here in the United States, we do, we do temperature in terms of degrees Fahrenheit. That's the unit and the label that we use. So part A says, on Monday, the temperature was 68 degrees Fahrenheit in sunny Florida. On Tuesday, a cold front hit and the temperature dropped 39 degrees Fahrenheit. What is the temperature on Tuesday? I know for me, if I'm thinking about this problem, I have to think about what it means if the temperature dropped and what operation that's telling me I need to use. So 
to think in your head, should I be adding 68 and 39 together or should I be subtracting? Hopefully, you're thinking that you have to subtract because it got colder. So when the temperature dropped, that means it's a cold, it's a it's a lower temperature. So I need to I need to solve 68 minus 39 equals something. Go ahead and take a minute, use whatever strategy works for you, and do that subtraction problem. about 30 more seconds. So kind of figuring out this, perfect. All right, and we're gonna pause here. So I'm gonna show you that subtraction algorithm again because it's a really great strategy to practice and will help you next year in third grade math. Eight minus nine. I can't do that because eight is a smaller number and I cannot take away a bigger number from it. So I have to regroup to get more. So I'm gonna regroup one of my tens. So instead of six, I have five. And now instead of eight ones, I have 18. 18 minus 9 is 9. 9 plus 9 is 18. Now I take away my 10s and I get 5 minus 3, that's 2. So my answer here is 29. And that represents 29 degrees Fahrenheit. I need to include the label in order to get that. So um, now we have part B that we have to answer. So we know Tuesday's temperature is 29 degrees Fahrenheit. And the next one that we have to do is part B, which says on Wednesday, the temperature warmed up 28 degrees Fahrenheit. What's the temperature on Wednesday? So again, just like the problem before, I have to make sure I understand what it means when the temperature warmed up. Hopefully you're thinking about um, the problem before and how that means the how this is talking about the opposite so instead of the temperature dropping the temperature is warming up so that means it's getting warmer and my temperature is going to be a bigger number so now I need to take the temperature from part A 29 degrees and I have to add 28 to that to figure out what the temperature is on Wednesday take about a minute to solve that problem About 30 more seconds. Okay, we're going to practice that algorithm again for this one. This time, though, it's the addition algorithm. So I have 29 plus 28. Starting with my ones, 9 plus 8 is 17. So 7 ones are in the ones place. I regroup my 10 ones to the tens place because 10 ones has a value of 10. 1 plus 2 is 3, and 2 more make 5. So Wednesday's temperature is 
57 degrees Fahrenheit. Make sure you include the degree sign and the Fahrenheit sign, Fahrenheit, the F for Fahrenheit. Awesome. The next set of problems that we have here our job says to write a number sentence that matches the following situations and then our job is to solve. And I think these pictures are going to be really helpful for us. So let's take a look here at the first one. Looks like a piece of gum. It says, and I'm going to try to zoom in here. Oops. Move this down. Zoom in some more. Whoopsie. Getting used to this camera, guys. All right. It says, Jennifer had, Jennifer has eight packs of gum. How many sticks of gum does she have in, does she have in all? Okay, I need to zoom in myself to this picture because somewhere on here it has to tell me how many pieces of gum she has. So let's see. Jennifer has eight packs of gum. How many sticks of gum does she have in all? Oh, I can see it right there in the picture. Hopefully you can too. Right here it tells you how many pieces of gum are in each pack. Hopefully everyone can make that out, that we have nine pieces of gum in each pack. So think in, the, in your head, she has eight packs of gum and there are nine pieces in each. So what type of number sentence am I gonna write? Eight packs of gum with nine pieces in each. Hopefully, you write the number sentence eight times nine equals something. That represents eight groups of nine. Eight packs of gum with nine pieces in each to figure out how many she has all together. Now there's a couple of different strategies and because this was relatively new, new content, I wanna do the first one together with you and then we are going to, I'm gonna have you do the next one by yourself. So I'm gonna zoom out here so you can see my board. So if my number sentence, let me move this up. If my number sentence is eight groups of nine equals something, I can solve this in a couple ways. I can draw an array, I can draw a picture, I can skip count, I can go on use a number line, I can use a bar model. But one strategy that I really like to do, because in VC we're practicing our mental math skills a lot, is I would like to do some doubles facts. So eight groups of nine means I have to write, I have to add nine eight times. Remember, multiplication is just like repeated addition. I'm talking about equal groups. So I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I need one more. Eight. So I have eight groups with nine in each group. Now I'm gonna add not, uh, I'm gonna add two nines together at a time. 9 plus 9, our doubles fact is 18. Another 9 plus 9 is 18. And then 9 plus 9 again is 18. And 9 plus 9 again is 18. So now I have to add my 18s together. This is a doubles fact. This is second grade fact power here. So now I have to add 18 and 18. We've practiced these strategies um, so far on, the vi on our videos adding our tens. 10 plus 10 is 20. 8 plus 8 is 16. So 20 plus 16 equals 36. Same thing over here. 18 plus 18. 10 plus 10, 20. 8 plus 8, 16. So just like before, 20 and 16 is 36. So now I'm left with two numbers, and we can use the same double strategy, adding our tens and adding our ones. You could even build these with base 10 blocks or do an algorithm, but let's practice that mental math strategy again. 30 plus 30 is 60. 6 plus 6 is 12. 60 plus 12 is 72. So this is my answer, 72 pieces of gum all together. I can even write this number sentence over again. Eight times nine equals 72. So if I have eight packs of gum with nine pieces in each, that means I have 72 pieces of gum. I'm gonna have you solve this next problem on your own. It says Coach Johnson bought seven boxes of baseballs. How many baseballs does he have in all? 
and that picture right there shows you how many baseballs are in each box. So take a second to write a number sentence, choose a strategy of your choice. You can do this doubles fact one, or you can draw an array or a picture, whichever you prefer. I'm gonna give us a couple minutes to do this. We have about 40 seconds left. If you have time, do a second strategy to solve. All right, I'm gonna zoom out here so that we have the board so you can see the strategy. So taking a look at this problem, hopefully you figured out that the number sentence should be seven times seven equals something. He has seven boxes of baseballs and from the picture I can see that there are seven baseballs in each box. So this number sentence means seven groups of seven. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that same strategy that I just showed you. And the way that we're gonna do that is I'm gonna be write, writing out seven groups of seven in repeated addition. So one, two, three, four, five, six, and one more makes seven. So I have seven groups with seven in each. And now I'm gonna do my doubles fact. Seven plus seven, that equals 14, 7 plus 7, 14, 7 plus 7, 14 again, and then I have one 7 left. Now I'm going to add two of my 14s together. Oh. 14 plus 14, well, 10 plus 10 equals 20, 4 plus 4 equals 8, so 14 plus 14 equals 28. Now, I don't have another doubles fact to do, but I can add 14 and 7. So I can do this by counting on my head or all different strategies. So I'll give you a second to figure out what 14 plus 7 is. Take a look at your paper if you did this strategy. 14 plus 7 is 21. So now I have to add 28 and 21 together. And at this point, you can do an algorithm, you can do base 10 blocks if you need to, or you can add your 10s and then your 1s. 20 plus 20 is 40, 8 plus 1 is 9, 40 plus 9 is 49. And there you have it, you have 49 total baseballs. Awesome. Well, that's all the math that we have for today. I hope you guys have a wonderful weekend.